So hey everybody, what's going on? Look, my name is Terry, welcome back to the channel. And I've been getting some DMs recently on Twitter asking about, hey Terry, you've been a cannon shooter for so long, why did you make the switch to Sony? And before I get into that, there is one thing that I actually want to try out with this new camera. This here is the Sony a7 IV. I got it a couple weeks or so ago. I absolutely love this thing. And I have the kit lens, which in my opinion, Sony and Canon have some of the best kit lenses out there. Like this is the a standard full frame 28 to 70. Uh, F3.5, it's a fantastic little kit lens, but I wanted something a little bit wider. Be before, I actually did buy the Sony 20mm F1.8, and it's an incredible lens, ridiculously sharp, but for shots like these here, I think 28 is a bit too close, and I think 20 is a little bit too wide, so what I did was I went ahead and picked up a Sigma Prime lens. It is their art line. So it's a very high-end, really professional lens here, okay? I've never worked with a Sigma lens before, but this is their 24 millimeter f1.8. I've heard nothing but good things about this lens. I also got a veritable ND filter for it as well too. So this is what the 28 mil looks like. I'm gonna swap to this thing right now and see how it compares. I also wanna see if uh, the eye tracking and stuff still works, because I know that sometimes on third-party lenses uh, stuff like face tracking eye detection that kind of stuff doesn't work so let's see how this goes shall we all right looks like everything is working correctly face detection uh, eye detection is also working so that's pretty cool now I did bump down the ISO from the native 640 here in um, in, in S log but what I'm going to do is because I have a variable ND filter on here I'm going to just sort of kind of take away some of this exposure a little bit Maybe like right there, a little bit brighter, and I'll take it down and post if I need to. But guys, I think I might have said it in the introduction here that this is an f1.8 lens. No, this is an f1.4 lens. So this is a very, very fast lens. I totally got that wrong. But uh, yeah, what do y'all think? Does it look good? Does it look nice and sharp? Personally, I think it does. Again, the eye detection, perfect. I'm not noticing any kind of lag. It's, it's accurate, it's snapping to my, my eyes, like, this is great, I love it, what do y'all think? So yeah, the elephant in the room, Terry, why did you switch from Canon for almost a decade to Sony? Well, um, to be perfectly honest with you all, is that I just wanted to change. You know, I've been shooting Canon for a very, very long time. Canon is what I really got my start off with, with photography a few years or so ago, back when I really got into it and I wanted to invest in myself for a camera body. Now, the very first camera I ever had was a Canon T5. Not the T5i, not the T6i with the autofocus, which is a straight up T5i. And you know, trying to film YouTube videos like this here without any sort of autofocus while filming video was a pain in the butt. So what I would have to do is sit here and I would have to like, you know, manually sit back a little bit and somehow press the shutter button to lock on my face a little bit and then hit the record button. Like that was, like, that was a, a lot of fun, folks, let me tell you, you know. But I did upgrade recently to a Canon EOS R from my 7070D, and I loved everything there was about that camera, you know. Um, I, I was a big Canon guy, a big Canon color guy, and, um, you know, like Sony, Canon Glass, they are legendary in the industry, you know, they really, really are. And uh, the only reason why I upgraded from my EOS R, not because there was anything wrong with it by any means, no, but... I have a wedding coming up soon. One of my best friends, um, she asked me to be their videographer and their photographer for their wedding. So naturally, I said yes. I I will never say no to, no to that. Like that is a huge honor for me to be able to say yeah. I took my my best friend's photos and videos at at their wedding, and frankly, um, whenever it comes to recording video, I am a big all-in-one guy in other words what that means is I don't want to have to have any sort of add-on accessory like an Atmos Ninja to where you can put a, a recorder on top of the camera then instead of recording internally record to that in ProRes and don't get me wrong that is a wonderful option a matter of fact there are quite a few big youtubers out there that still use the EOS R even though it's a few years old now and they use an external monitor for recording 
and they basically say that it essentially turns it into a mini C200, like a mini cinema camera. So like if that's an option for you and you want to do that, by all means, go right ahead. But personally, I would rather do everything internally, you know, and I really wanted to make sure that if some of the shots, because of where I'm going to be at in the venue, uh, that I might not be able to, you know, frame up perfectly, I really want to be able to make sure that I'm shooting in 4K. And the fact that this Sony a7 IV here, it shoots completely uncropped 4K. Not only that, it actually downsamples it from 7K to be that much sharper. That is an awesome, uh, just a major benefit for me personally. Don't get me wrong, the 4K crop in the EOS R, it's actually a good thing, especially if you're doing a lot of like, you know, wildlife shots, uh, maybe you don't have, a, you know, telephoto lenses or anything like that and you shoot weddings and you want to just pop it in 4K, get that extended crop to get a little bit more length out of that barrel and you can punch in that way and you'll be just fine. But personally, I would prefer to have it uncropped and that way there I can go back in and post if, if I need to do the cropping myself or reframe shots and all that jazz. Now, the biggest reason why I upgraded to this Sony camera is, well, the record limit. Now you see the EOS R and a lot of other digital cameras out there these days, whether you're talking about DSLRs or mirrorless like this here, you know, they have a record limit for video and it's normally around a little over 29 minutes because if they go over that, they have to classify them differently or they're taxed differently. That's just what I heard years ago. That might not be the case now, but that's just what I've heard, okay? But the thing here is though, is that with this new Sony a7 IV, is that there is absolutely no record limit. So that means I can put my battery grip on here, pop in two batteries for, the, for this thing, and I can record their entire ceremony without worrying about, oh, will this thing shut off? Will, will it stop recording mid-ceremony, uh, mid you know? So like, the fact that I can just set this thing to re record and just literally just let it go for hours until the batteries run out, that is incredible. And you know, you might be saying, well, Terry, you know, you've always said you're a big Canon guy, you're a big Canon color guy. Uh, how does this Sony pair up to that? Well, here's the thing, okay? I am not going to be comparing the colors at all because you have to grade these different cameras a little bit differently. You know what I mean? Whenever it comes to how this Sony looks, I've noticed that it sometimes has more of a green and magenta hint to whatever I might be filming. Like right here, I think it looks a little green. So I'm gonna in post here before you know I post this. I'm gonna edit it and all that jazz here for you guys and gals, and I might take a little bit of the green out. At least on the flip out screen here, the little preview screen, it looks a little bit on the greener side. So I, I can always fix that in post. Just apply a LUT, tweak it however I want, and that will be it. Now right now I'm actually shooting an S Log three. Um, I, I've heard that there are some extra benefits for shooting in the old S-Log2, but I just want to experiment with this camera to see how far I can push it. I am shooting in the XAVC HS profile, uh, so that is the high efficiency video codec, and this is of course 4K, 24 frames per second. This is 10-bit, but I believe it's 420 instead of 422. And uh, the reason why I'm doing this in 420, uh, 420 is because one, this uh, video mode doesn't actually support 422. And on top of that, I've always heard that 420 is a lot easier to edit even on high-end systems. Like personally, I have a 5900X AMD Ryzen, 32 gigs of RAM, and a beastly RTX 3080. I, I pop this footage into Resolve and I'm able to edit it like quite literally no problem whatsoever. Uh, I can't say the same about Pre Premiere though. Um, you know, I love Premiere. I learned so much of what I do now in Premiere, but unfortunately, whenever it comes to this high efficiency video codec, the H.265 stuff, it just, it just chugs. Like, it like straight up chugs, you know? So, I went ahead and bought a studio license for Re Resolve, one-time payment, lifetime update, so that's going to save me a lot of money every single month right there, but it just chews through this high efficiency codec stuff on Re Resolve 18. It just chews through it, exports extremely quick, even with a lot of color corrections, LUTs applied, all the uh, audio tweaks, like 
Resolve, Black Magic, y'all are killing it. 10 out of 10, highly recommend. But yeah, so um, yeah, just try to get back on track here, sorry guys. But uh, yeah, again, just the, uh, you know, the no re record limit, um, having two card slots in this camera. So right now I'm actually simultaneously re recording to two V60 SD cards where you could also have a, a CFAS card in here too, but those are really expensive. And frankly here, folks, the only time I would really ever use a CFAST card in here is if I was going to be doing the S&Q stuff or, or the all-eye codec here for 4K. But personally, this compressed footage looks beautiful, and in my opinion, it looks just as good. And keep in mind here, folks, I am by no means a video codec expert, but I have seen quite a few videos here on YouTube to where people are saying that the all-eye codec actually in some situations looks a little bit worse than the compressed x264 stuff or what i'm using here again the high efficiency codec or the x265 stuff so again i don't know if that's true this v uh, this v60 card will not even allow me to select the all i format but maybe later if i can afford a good cfast card or a low capacity v90 card i can give that a shot for you all to test it out if you would like me to but yeah so just a little again a little summary about why i switched from uh canon to sony it was a long time coming and i'm so happy and i'm so excited to actually uh challenge myself again to learn a new camera system this is the first new camera system that i've had to learn in quite a few years now yeah i you know personally i don't like to stay comfortable i i, I like to go out of my comfort zone a little bit and push myself as a creator to really see what I can do with new equipment. And this Sony is probably the best, if not one of the best upgrades that I have ever done to my entire setup. And I cannot wait to bring you guys and gals more content. And a matter of fact, you too, folks, I have a review coming out of the DJI microphone in the next couple of weeks. Um, long story short, this thing sounds incredible. Like DJI, I don't know what kind of magic you all have back there in your factories or in your tuning department for the mic profiles on this thing, but out of the box, y'all, you got to keep an eye out for this thing. It sounds fantastic. It really does. So if you want to see that, do me a huge favor, everybody. Make sure to get subscribed to the channel. Get this video liked. Let me know I'm doing a good job. And you know what? Happy creating. I'll catch you guys and gals next time.